Born in 1768 in Asenby, a village in North Riding of Yorkshire, Mary was raised by her farmer father. Despite her modest upbringing, she acquired basic literacy skills and, at the age of 13, began working as a servant girl in Thirsk, also located in the North Riding of Yorkshire. When she turned 20, Mary relocated to York and pursued a career as a dressmaker. However, her involvement in a burglary compelled her to flee to Leeds the following year. Over the next four years, she found employment as a Manchu maker while simultaneously gaining a reputation as a fortune teller and wise woman. In 1792, Mary married John Bateman, a wheelwright, thus starting a new chapter in her life. During the early years of their marriage, Mary engaged in several acts of theft and was repeatedly apprehended. Yet, through bribing those who bore witness to her crimes, she managed to evade imprisonment. In 1796, John joined the army, prompting Mary to accompany him away from Leeds. Yet within a year, they returned to the city. Among her various offenses, there are reports of Mary wandering the streets of Leeds following a significant fire, pretending to collect donations for the victims, but retaining the charitable contributions for herself. According to author Summer Stevens, she was also known to work as an abortionist. In 1806, Mary became a follower of the prophetess Johanna Southcott and regularly attended their meetings. It was during this time that she orchestrated a notorious hoax known as the Prophet Hen of Leeds. Mary claimed that eggs laid by a hen were imprinted with the message, Christ is coming, which was believed to be a precursor to the end times. She exhibited three of these eggs to the public, charging a penny for viewing. However, when the hen was taken away from her, it ceased laying prophetic eggs. Subsequently, it was discovered that Mary had inscribed the messages on the eggs, using ink, and then reintroduced them into the hen's reproductive system. In the same year, Mary was approached by William and Rebecca Perigo, with Rebecca suffering from chest pains. Mary diagnosed Rebecca as being under a spell and, over the following months, began providing them with poison pudding. Unfortunately, Rebecca's condition deteriorated and she eventually succumbed to the poison in 1808. In October of that year, William Perigo accused Mary of poisoning his wife and defrauding them of money for the preceding two years under the pretense of selling charms and cures. Although Mary vehemently professed her innocence, a search of her residence yielded poison, as well as personal belongings of her victims, including those of the Perigo couple. In March 1809, Mary Bateman faced her trial in York. The proceedings lasted approximately 11 hours. Surprisingly, the jury swiftly reached a verdict, finding her guilty of fraud and the murder of Rebecca Perigo. Following the judge's pronouncement of a death sentence, Bateman made a claim that she was 22 weeks pregnant, which supposedly spared her from hanging. In a response, the judge requested a sheriff to assemble a panel of matrons to examine her condition. Twelve married women were sworn in as jurors and conducted a physical evaluation, ultimately determining that Bateman was not pregnant. According to William Knight's account, which dates back to 1867, Bateman allegedly had a daughter at home along with an infant child that accompanied her in prison. It is said that she sent her wedding ring to her husband, intending for him to pass it on to their daughter. On Monday, March 20th, 1809, Bateman met her fate on the gallows, being executed alongside two men. Following Mary Bateman's execution, her body was transported to Leeds General Infirmary, where a macabre spectacle unfolded. The hospital put her body on public display, charging a fee of three pence for each visitor to behold a grim sight. The renowned surgeon William Hay conducted a three-day dissection of the body, turning it into a morbid event. On the first day, medical students eagerly paid to observe the cadaver. The following day, approximately 100 tickets were made available to affluent gentlemen from Leeds who were willing to pay five guineas for the opportunity. Finally. On the third day, women were granted the chance to purchase day tickets and attend Hayes' lectures about the dissected remains. Adding to the grotesque aftermath, strips of Mary Bateman's skin were skillfully tanned into leather. These macabre artifacts were then sold as magical charms purportedly capable of warding off evil spirits. Furthermore, the governor of Ripon Prison claimed possession of the tip of her tongue, while two books from the Library of Mexborough House had their covers fashioned from her skin. Regrettably, these books mysteriously disappeared during the mid-19th century, leaving a chilling legacy behind. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing by clicking the red subscribe button below. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support means the world to us. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.